Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. Welcome to episode two of my series on how to improvise music. On today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at how to use common tones to help us create lines and play through chord progressions. If you look in the description box below, there'll be a link for some free materials that you can download that'll help you assimilate this stuff. There's a PDF and a couple of standard MIDI files. The standard MIDI files you can open up in any sequencer. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions below. Thanks so much for watching, and let's get right into it. I'm going to assume that you all know some of basic chord voicings. You know what a 2-5-1 progression is, you know what a minor 7th chord is, what a dominant 7th chord is, what a major 7th chord is. I'm going to assume that you know those things. Right here on the PDF, we have the first eight bars of a jazz standard called Autumn Leaves. And what's nice about this particular song is that it's fairly basic, and it covers what's called a 2-5-1 progression in both major and relative minor. If we take a look up here at the names of the chords, we've got C minor 7, F7, and B flat major 7th. And that's a 2 5 1 in the key of B flat. Then there's an E flat major 7th, which is the 4 chord in the key of B flat. It's also the 6 chord in the key of G minor. So if we look at our next chord here on the second line, we have an A minor 7 flat 5 to D7 to G minor, which is the 2 5 1 in the key of G minor. So you've got 2 5 1, 2 5 1. So it's great for practicing, especially once you start transposing this to all 12 keys, that you can, you know, if, if I were to play this, let's say in the key of A flat minor. I were to play it in the key of A minor. Let's take a look at some very basic voicings for the chords in this progression. So we're just going to use the, the root, the third, and the seventh of each chord. So for C minor seventh, that's right, C, B flat, and E flat. And now if we want to do smooth voice leading to the F7, we take our B flat, move it down a half step, take our C, jump up to F, and hold on to the F7. So now going from our F7 to our B flat major seventh, we've got the A common. And then going from B flat major seventh to E flat major seventh, we have the D common. And then on this next chord, which is an A minor seventh with a flat fifth, I'll be omitting the flat five here. You can play that in your lines. It gives you a little bit of flexibility, and that's something in a future lesson. I'm gonna keep the G and move the A and the C. And then for the D7, I'll keep the C and move the bottom two voices. And then now we have no common tones for the G minor. And when you're repeating this, you would typically go back to G7 there, which takes us back to the C minor. If we look right here, and I've changed the harmonic rhythm here. Instead of it being one chord per measure, it's two chords per measure, just to save some space in the manuscript. And we get something like this. Those are our common tones, and we'll also use them as target notes to create melodic figures that will play us through these chord progressions. What I would say to do, if, if you're a pianist, to learn how to play two note shell voicings in your left hand. So it would be just something like this here. Very simple. Learning how to keep a steady beat. Whoops, I missed it. Talking and playing is hard for me. If you take a look at this, one of the standard MIDI files, I've got this chord progression, just like this, repeated twice and then transposed into all 12 keys so that you can play along with it if you are a single line player, like a saxophone, flute, or even if you're a guitar player. And 
that, that'll help you out if you can't play keyboards. All right. So if this is too much for you at first, you can just go one, two, three, four, right? Just simple. And just go through it. And these are the kinds of chords that Bud Powell used to use, right? All right, so how do we start improvising? Well, the first thing is very basic. So this is exercise one. Just playing that top line and just adding some very, very simple rhythmic activity. You want to get this stuff in your hands and you want to get it in all 12 keys. You want to have facility in all 12 keys. I can't say that enough. You can make that a B natural if you'd like, because you're going back to C minor. You play that and you get that. You know, I'm assuming that you might not know how to improvise at all. And some of you may know how to do this already. And that's great, but it's always good to know all the foundational material because that will enable you to do much more complex stuff much more easily. Staying on exercise one, how would I vary that? Well, you would change the rhythm. And I held that over. Or you could do. And you could see it's starting to swing a little bit. You know, you're working on your timing and just knowing all those notes so that if I were to play this in another key, let's say I played this in um, B flat minor. Or let's say I played it in um, E minor, right? Or if I played it in F sharp minor. Literally, I practice doing stuff like this, even when I'm learning a new tune, just getting all these basic things. I know where my third is, I know where my seventh is, and those are my target notes. Those are typically going to be a lot of your common tones between typical jazz standard songs. Moving forward, the next step would be adding an upper neighbor tone, right? So what do I mean by that? So we're in the key of two flats, right? Even though this is two, five, one and B flat, we're ending up on G minor. The song actually is starting on the four chord. Just going up in the scale. Changing the rhythm. You can also start adding rests. The next is triads. So if we look at 37, in the right hand, I'm outlining a C minor triad, then a B flat, then at measure 41, an A half diminished, or an A diminished triad, and then a G minor. And then we'll make that a, a B natural. 
Let's play this. I'm doing this very straight rhythm in my left hand, right? Because there are many things that you can do with your left hand to add syncopations and add rhythmic interest, but basically I want you to get into learning your vocabulary and being able to unfold it smoothly and in time. So your left hand, and you should be doing this with a metronome, but your left hand is keeping a nice solid beat and you're locking that in with your right hand. So your hands are coordinated together. And if you're an instrumentalist, you're playing along with the rhythm on this standard MIDI file I've left out, or maybe you've made a, a loop if you're a guitar player and you're playing along with it. But if you're a pianist, you really want to be able to do more than one thing at a time. Practicing things that you could be using when you're playing is a great way to do that. Rhythm. Okay, so that's another thing you can do. Right here, I've got a C minor chord. What I'm doing here is the first bit is a C minor triad, then I'm filling in on the next one from the seventh down to the fifth, and the same thing all the way through, except the very end, I've got a little turn that goes up. And just that last phrase is a little bit melodically different, but the rhythm is the same. You see what I'm doing here? Instead of just playing one chord, the next chord, the next chord, I'm playing in two bar phrases. And basically what you should be working towards eventually is playing from the beginning all the way through to the end as if it's one long phrase and then maybe having some sub phrases in the middle of it but this is basically learning vocabulary learning the vernacular and learning how to output it from your hands to your instrument and then here we go adding more rests and some rhythmic variation so let's analyze this so we've got third up to the fifth and then seventh down to the fifth third to the fifth Right, and then over here, I'm not playing it rhythmically correctly, I'm just showing you the notes. Seventh, six, five. And then here, third. So basically just that common tone, the third to the seventh, the third of the C minor chord to the seventh of the F chord, the third of the B flat major seventh to the seventh of the E flat major seventh, and all the way through. And so let's try this. Make that a B natural there. Let's look at this one here. I'm going to add, again, we're talking two bar phrases here, right? And I'm going to do some scale fragments to help us out. So in the beginning here, I'm going from E flat down to B flat, which is in the C minor chord. And then instead of hitting this E flat on the downbeat, I'm going to anticipate that downbeat. I'm going to rhythmically displace that, and that'll be something in a future lesson, by one eighth note earlier. That's pretty cool, and then you could play some games with that. Mm -hmm. 
this is the last little bit that we're going to go through today, and this is exploring other harmonic common tone relationships. In all the examples we've looked at so far, we've been going from the third of the first chord to the seventh of the second chord. So we've been doing two bar phrases like that through the progression. Here, we can also look at some of the color tones. For example, in C minor, the D is the ninth, but, but in F, the D is either the sixth or the thirteenth. So we're going from the ninth to either the sixth or the thirteenth. That last bit is really important. What I find with my students a lot of times, especially in my film scoring class where they're actually spending the whole semester writing music, is that they tend to emphasize the tonic of a chord when they're writing melodies quite often. And I think that that should be avoided unless it's in passing as often as possible. When you're passing through and you've got the tonic of the chord, that's, that's one thing. But if you're starting the downbeat with the tonic of the chord on almost every measure, that's not really writing a melody to me. That's writing an additional bass line. The other bit is to get off of playing all of your lines starting on the downbeat. Start on the and of one. Start on the and of four. Just those two little concepts there, work on them. And the other thing that I would tell you is instead of trying to get through everything here, get through the basics and learn how to play the first exercise in all 12 keys. And then just play around with that. And if all 12 keys are impossible for you to do at one sitting, what you do is you break it up into smaller bite-sized chunks. Today I'm working on G minor. Tomorrow I'm working on A flat minor. The next day I'm working on G minor and A flat minor. Then I'm working on A minor. Then I'm working on G minor, A flat minor, and A minor. And you take a couple of weeks and you learn how to get through all 12 keys with that first bit. And then once you start getting familiar with how to do that, it becomes a lot easier once you start doing the more complicated stuff. When you're doing that, always be aware of your common tones. What's the third and what's the seventh? Those are really important when you're traveling through the circle of fifths. This is, you know, the first real lesson I'm doing on this. And I've got another lesson prepared that I'm going to be filming tomorrow. I'll be uploading this one a week. And so this is a good starting point. I'm going to be covering a lot of aspects of improvisation in this series, and I hope that you can tune in for the rest of them. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions below, and please don't forget to download the free material in the description box below. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.